Today's text comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verse 25. In your pew Bible, it is on page 872. And this text is no ordinary text, but instead is probably the greatest testimony ever said, ever recorded, ever shared with others. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, though I was blind, now I see. The word of the Lord. This verse obviously is not a verse unto itself. It's not its own entity, but comes in the midst of a bigger story and context. It comes in the midst of Jesus bringing healing to a blind man, to a man who had been blind from death, I mean from death, excuse me, from birth. It was a man who had never seen the world. It was a man whose blind spot was everything. For though he heard his world, he smelled his world, he touched his world, he could have even tasted his world. He had never been able to see. His life was a life of darkness. And Jesus comes to this man and calls him forward and brings healing unto his life. So for the first time, this world of darkness, this place where could not, he could not see, he could not understand because he did not understand what it meant to look, to see colors, to see someone's face, to see the sun rising or the sun setting or a beautiful blue sky or the stars at night. It was to this man that Jesus opened his eyes and brought sight. And one would think that that's an amazing moment, isn't it? But Jesus was in the midst of controversy. As often happens with those who want to help, there were those who were investigating him. And they bring this gentleman in and ask him, did he really heal you? And he said, yes. Now, I had been blind from birth, but they didn't believe him. So they called his parents and said, is this your son? And he, they said, yes, it is. And was he blind? Yes, he was. Then how can he see now? His parents, being a little afraid of what was happening, said, well, he's old enough. Ask him. And he says he had already stated what he said, what had happened. And they kept on arguing and debating. And he comes to this moment when again they ask him. And he says, you know what? Whether this person was a sinner or not, whether this person is whatever, a prophet or the Messiah or a homeless person on the street or just anyone, all I know is that I could not see. My whole life was darkness. And now I see. Simple. Everyone else made it more complicated. But for him, it was simple. I had never seen the light of day, but now I can. I had never seen the faces of my family, but now I can. I had never seen the beauty of the temple, the beauty in creation, but now I can. Everyone else was making it so much more complicated. But he realized it wasn't that complicated. What was his blind spot, literally, was now eliminated. And so Jesus brought to light what was in darkness. And as I was 
going through and studying and getting ready for today. I was trying to figure out how do we, how do we represent this blind person today? And I realized that for many of us, we may not logically understand. We can, we can make a connection and say, okay, this person couldn't see and now they can. So we try to make it literal and close our eyes and imagine what the world would be like if we couldn't see it. But that's not the same because we know what it looks like even when we close our eyes to not see it. But I was thinking about what are some of the blindnesses in our society in our persons, in our beings. And for many of us, I dare say all of us, but I'm being generous and saying most, we have blind spots in our life. There are people, there are situations, there are circumstances, there are things that maybe we don't see for what they are or for who they are, for many reasons. For some of us, it's intentional. We intentionally ignore this because we feel a certain type of way about them. For some of us, we don't even realize it because it's just always been that way. For some, we are ignorant to the fact that there is anything going on at all because we just don't have that capacity to understand it. But in all of our lives, there are blind spots. And so today, I bring that to the forefront. And as Jesus brought this blind man forward and opened his eyes, today is the day that Jesus wants to open your eyes, to open you from the blind spots that you may have in your life, to open your eyes to the things that you may not see. For most of us who do drive, you can look through your windshield and look at your mirrors, but there's one more step that you have to take. And that's you have to look back. I know nowadays with technology, the mirror can show you if someone is in your blind spot. But if most of you are like me, I still glance over just in case. Because that's called a blind spot for a reason. Your mirrors can be set perfectly. You can look forward and make sure no one is before you, but there is that one spot. If a car is just outside of your mirror's range and you go to move over or change lanes, there they are and something can happen. So I want you to think about who lives in that spot in your life. What situation or circumstance lives in that spot in your life? where you may think you know that they're there, but you really can't see them unless you turn and look at them. For many, there are those spots, and it's difficult, because for many of us, it's drama or trauma that causes that to be there. As an example of the church here at Lower Marion, when I started four years ago, I tried to bring to the forefront some, some things that can be helpful for us. And there was a book that I brought to leadership that for many, we were never able to get past the title of it. It is a book by Tom Rainier, and the title of the book is An Autopsy of a Dying Church. And for, for those who don't know, an autopsy happens after a person has died and they check the body and they go through and they figure out what went wrong. And that is not only so that the family can understand what happened, but it's also helpful for those in the future. For if there was a disease or there was something that went wrong, they can see and figure out someone and save their life after. My thought was that. It wasn't that I thought that we were dying, we were struggling and surviving and trying to survive. But for many who had been in the, in the ditches, in the foxholes, working and pushing through, they understood this to mean that we were dying. But in fact, it was the opposite. I was trying to help us to see what had happened somewhere else 
so that if we recognize any of these things, we can be aware and help us to see better now and to look better at the future. And there was one story in particular that I thought was, was like crucial because there was a church that was a thriving church at one point. There was a church that had been doing well for a long time and then they hit some difficult times, some difficult moments. And in the story of what happened to this church, the leadership and those who were in charge were arguing and debating over a room. It was a very special room. It was the parlor where you hosted important people and important guests. So it was an important room. But while they were worrying about the paint and fighting over the rug and arguing over what furniture should be in there and shouldn't be, the church was dying around them. They were blinded by their focus on this room. It was comforting to them because this was the thing that represented them. But they lost focus on what they needed to do. And for me, that was crucial. Because we, as Lower Marion, have focused on the things that we needed to focus on. There it hasn't been a room or one thing that has taken or distracted us. God has been faithful and has helped us to focus on the important things, on those who are here, those who were working, those who were trying, those who were continuing to keep us around. And now here we are, four years later, no longer in survival mode no longer struggling in the foxholes, but now breathing cleaner air, seeing brighter lights, being able to stretch a little bit and understand that God's faithfulness continues because our blind spots were exposed or weren't allowed to happen as they did for some of these churches that were written about. But now in your life, what is the thing that you are focusing on? What is that thing that you are worried about that's distracting you from seeing the things that you need to see? There's something that's preventing you from seeing your situation for what it really is. You have a blind spot. There's something that's taking your attention from what it needs to be and where it needs to be and putting it on something else so that this can continue to happen. Well, what is that? Is it work? Is it worry? Is it a situation with another, a relationship? Is it something that you are not even aware of yet? What's happening? And where is it happening? We're driving on this road of life and we have this windshield before us and we look at our mirrors and see God wants us or I think this is where I need to go. This is my next step. This is my next exit to go into the things that I need to do that God is calling me to. But you have to be careful for what is laying in your blind spot. It can prevent you from reaching your destination. So today, as you consider this, as you think about and pray for, I pray that God would reveal in your life the very thing that may be sitting in your blind spot. I pray that God shed light on a dark spot that you may not see because there's shadow there. I pray that your testimony can be like this man's testimony. All I know is that I was blind to this. I was blind and I couldn't see what was there. I was blind and couldn't see beyond the shadow. I was blind and couldn't see beyond that. But now, that may have been what was. 
but now. There was a difficult moment in that darkness, but now. I may not have seen it then. I may have tripped over it then, but now I can see. May God open our hearts and our minds. May God's light shine on those dark areas. May we look at a glance and see what may be sitting in our blind spot so that we may not trip over something that could have been prevented. Because you may have been blind. You may have had a blind spot. But thank God that now we all can see.